So our granulated black powder has been drying out for a few days and now we're going to test the finished product um, just to get a comparison to the Polonia lift powder and our Mimosa lift powder. Before we get into some of the testing, um, we're going to separate out the different grain sizes so that we're using the right grain size for the different purposes we have. Black powder is split up into different um, grain sizes and there's also two different grades of powder. So the grades of powder are A and G. A stands for blasting grade and G stands for sporting grade. So for getting the different sizes of grains, um, there's two different measurements. One measurement is in millimeters. The other measurement is in mesh range or the mesh size. Um, so the chart on the screen right now shows the mesh range for different sizes of grains for your black powder. There's, there'll be two numbers on the mesh range. The first number is the mesh size that the, the actual grain will pass through. The second number is the mesh size that that grain will stay on top of. It will not pass through there. The lift powder that we're making is about a 2FA or would be a sort of a homemade equivalent of the 2FA which that's um, the F is fine or the fineness of the grain. So this is a two fineness A blasting grade basically is what we're kind of trying to make. So I also made another grain size that I would consider a one F G or a one fineness of sporting grade. Um, and it's not going to be glazed. I'm not going to be going over that process, but that's the equivalent size. So for the 2FA, it has a mesh range of four to 12. So that means that it will pass through a four mesh and it will sit on top of a 12 mesh. It will not pass through a 12 mesh. The other sizing in millimeters, um, for homemade black powder, I don't really think that's a very good measurement. It's You're not gonna go in and measure each little grain with a ruler and try to figure out how many millimeters each grain is. So the mesh range I think is, is more effective for homemade black powder because you can just put the first mesh on top, you can put the, the second mesh below that and then have something that catches the remaining uh, grains that pass through that second mesh and you can use that as something else. So uh, we're gonna be making the two, like I said, we're gonna make the two FA and I'll show you how we're gonna do that real quick. All right, so we can see these grains have been drying out. Um, they're very, very hard. You can take up, you can pick up one of the individual grains in your fingers. Let me see if I can get one separated out here. That one grain right there. And I can really push it squeeze it and uh, some of the rough edges come off but it doesn't turn back into powder it's still that grain and it won't turn back into powder no matter how much you squeeze it i'm sure you could probably put it in like a press or something but if you just squeeze it with your fingers that's how you know it's it's dry and it's ready to go what i have set up right now is i just have a clean piece of paper um, sitting underneath a 50 mesh screen so that's going to catch all of the what you would be considered a meal D powder. Um, and I use the meal D in um, things like spolettes, which are kind of like time fuses. So I do use that uh, for those. And that's how I'm going to capture that. So I'm looking for the 2FA to pass through the 4 mesh and sit on top of a 12 mesh. So what I'm gonna be doing is placing the four mesh on top of that 12 mesh, pushing all of my um, grains through to get them to pass through the four mesh. And I'll basically knock off the rough edges and um, any pieces that are larger than this mesh won't go through. They'll be caught on the 12 mesh. And then anything that's smaller than that is, is would not be considered a 2FA and I can either catch that on a different screen or let it pass all the way through to a 50. 
Now, because I also made a, a, a 1FG equivalent, um, that grade will pass through a 12, so it will go through the 12 mesh, and it will land on, it will not pass through a 20 mesh. So I can actually put all of this powder through the same setup, and I can get a 2FA and a 1FG sort of all in the same pass, and those different grain sizes will be sitting on their corresponding mesh. And then anything that goes through there is gonna be caught with the 50. If it goes through there and lands on the paper, all that's considered meal D. So I have my 50, the paper on the bottom, the 50 screen on the paper, the 20 mesh screen will go on top of the 50 mesh screen. The 12 mesh screen goes on top of the 20. And then the four mesh screen goes on top of the 12. And now I'm ready to, to put all of my uh, grains through and I'll get two, I'll get several different um, grain sizes, but I'll have two main grain sizes of the two FA and then the one FG. And then I'll get everything else I'll just consider meal powder. Now, if you have other screen sizes, uh, like for a two FG would be a 30, um, the 3FG does say it sits on top of a 50 mesh screen. If you did have a 30 screen, a 30 mesh screen, you could put that under the 20 and get your 2FG. And if all this is kind of not really making sense, I'm gonna show you real quick and it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, so you can kind of get the right mesh sizes for whatever grain size you're really going after. So at this point we have the screens all set up in the right order that we want them. And I'll just start with this, uh, the one FG. So you just pour it in. Uh, most of the stuff is gonna go right through the four. So we can kind of just make sure it all goes through there. And so, and these are clumped, a lot of them are clumped together. Uh, so the individual grains will pass right through, but the reason we're kind of sorting it through like this is so that we can break up those clumps of grains that we have that are kind of sticking to each other. And then if we had any that were just a little bit too big during the process, they either were extruded out to be too big or um, whatever, we can kind of get rid of those through this process. All right, so all that went through the four, the number four mesh. So now it's sitting on top of a 12 mesh. So anything that goes through here and sits on top of our 20 mesh, that will be the, uh, the one FG. So this is breaking off a lot of those, like the hard edges. Um, and it also, if we have any that are too big, it'll stop them from going through. We can either put them in with the two FA Maybe it's a more of a TFA or some, some other size. And so this is the mesh that we actually used to make this size grain. We pushed it through this mesh to make these size grains. So when we're pushing it back through, once it's dried, we're just breaking off those rough edges. Um, and then that'll basically turn into this, like the meal powder. Uh, we're also breaking up those different grains that have stuck together. So these screens kind of, they kind of bend in like this. Um, so I try to avoid pushing down the middle because when you let off, it'll bounce back up. So I try to go like on the edges so I can really push in hard. Um, but if you do push in in the middle, just be careful when you lift it back up that it doesn't bounce up and send your grains flying. Like that. All right, so now we have all the grains that are sitting on top of a 20 mesh screen. So all this would be considered the 1FG. And then as you can see in that 50 mesh, there's a lot of uh, powder down there. Some of that could be considered a 3FG, uh, but I'm just gonna use it as a meal powder uh, for my purposes.
And then you end up with a more, much more unified uh, grain size for your purpose. So now we're gonna go with the 2FA. Um, and this will pass through a four mesh and will sit on top of a 12 mesh. So everything that landed on the 12, this will be considered our, our 2FA. And then you can see we had some stuff go through. And we can even kind of like just like shake this stuff up just to let the stuff that's gonna pass through go right through. And then that's a 12 mesh, or that's a 20 mesh rather. So we could consider this stuff a, a 1FG. We could put that in with our 1FG. And then again, we get a, even more meal powder And then again, you just end up with a more unified grain size. All right, so you can see that we actually end up with uh, four different grades of powder. Um, and we could probably have gotten five if we had a, if I had a 30 mesh screen. I could have got a, a 2FA out of this, but um, or a 2FG rather. Uh, but we got our unified sizing of the 1FG, the unified sizing of the 2FA, uh, another sizing of what you could consider a 3FG. Um, I'll probably use, mostly use it for some type of a meal powder, but then even below that, through this 50 mesh screen, which is really what you would probably consider more of a, a meal powder. I'm just gonna shake some of this stuff out real quick. Underneath that, um, would be like a meal D. Um, and that's really what I'll mostly be using for sp spolettes. I might uh, actually save this for the 3FG. Because um, I would like to do some uh, flintlock firings and some muzzle loading. Um, so there you go. We got, we made two sizes or, or two, uh, yeah, two sizes of the granulated powder, we end up getting um, four different sizes out of it. So now we'll take our different grain sizes and we'll do some tests. First test consisted of placing the black powder into a 70 centimeter trench and igniting it using a time delay fuse. You can see in the video that it's hard to tell in real time which powder was faster. Um, slowed down, you can see that there is a little bit of uh, speed increase with the polonia, uh, but it doesn't seem to be very much. Um, this is, is good. It shows that mimosa could be used as a substitute for polonia if polonia is not available.